Pardon me, and going to my left, uh, Levi Chi, present. Michael Warner, present. Patrick Severa, present. Matthew Rathbun, present. Victor Delgado, present. And uh, my fellow co-chair, Haley Glass, will be arriving in a moment. Um, online, if you're online and here for the meeting, please make yourself present or known. Haley Glass, present. All right, and uh, could we get someone to read the mission statement real quick? To support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Thank you, Patrick. Um, has everyone looked over the agenda? Any questions, comments, concerns about the agenda? All right, uh, I motion the vote to approve the agenda. A second. All opposed? Any abstentions? All in favor? All right, agenda is approved and we'll move on to, well, we have a uh, public comment in a minute. So uh, do you want to just get started early? Yeah, uh, okay. Um, so yeah, we'll start public comment right now. Um, and uh, whoever is here for public comment online, please make yourself known. All right then, uh, P, um, for anybody present who wants to um, start with public comment, um, could you please state your name and um, your question or whatever comment you have. Uh, my name is Rowan Joyner. I'm an MSU student. My pronouns are they, them, and theirs, and I'm here to give public comment on here to, uh, to give public comment on possible amendments to the delicacy program. Perfect. Um, I will go ahead and give you five minutes to speak on that. Uh, beginning now. Awesome. Uh, well, again, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Um, last week, I saw this council vote to approve the delicacy program, and specifically, I saw this council vote to allow those delegates a vote on the four standing committees. Uh, the purpose of the program being to observe how these interactions with the student body would work and to allow members of the student body to not only have a voice, but to put up work from the council and help with projects. I admire this because it's, it sounds like a very effective way of getting student voices more involved on this campus. And I really want to commend you guys for your efforts on that. Like genuinely, it's a very, very cool thing. Um, I see here that President Davidson is proposing to amend that and disallow delegates from two of these committees to have a vote. Um, and I, I just find that counter to the purpose of the resolution. Um, in my observations yesterday, uh, President Davidson has not been a good ear when it comes to listening to students. I've tried to set up a meeting with her repeatedly. She hasn't been responsive. So I don't really think that her opinion can be trusted when it comes to how the delicacy program should be run, given that the student government's mission is, as you said just now, to support the evolving needs of students by advocating in their best interests to enhance the university experience and opportunities. I think one of the most important of said opportunities is the opportunity to have your voice heard as a student because your voice should matter on your campus. So I don't think that students who are um, delegates on those two committees should have their votes cut. I think that student voices need to be heard as much as possible. 
Perfect. I absolutely agree with you. And just for a point of clarification, that um, amendment to my delegates program is not coming from President Davidson. It's actually coming from a council member um, who unfortunately is not in attendance today um, to share their opinion on it. But um, we will have that for discussion in the meeting. We will definitely take your opinion into account for that. Is there anything else you'd like to share in your last three minutes? I just wanted to thank you all for being here and thank you for um, being willing to hear me out on this. Um, I really appreciate all the work that you guys do. I just really felt like this was an important thing to bring up um, and I appreciate all of your receptivity to communication. Perfect, if you don't use the rest of that time, I think we'll move over to the next person if that's all right. Um, Sky, were you here to speak for public comment as well? Not particularly, I'm just gonna say thank you guys. I think you're doing great. Just here to observe and watch you do. Thank you for coming. Okay, perfect. I think with no one else here for public comment, we do have President Davidson coming in at 11.50, um, but she will be in a meeting up until exactly then. So we'll just go ahead and move forward to the next item on our agenda, which are those possible am amendments to the delegates program. Um, so I have quite a few of them listed and I wanted this to be kind of a conversation about what exactly to do about them. I know we kind of touched on this last week also. Um, I do think it's really important for these delegates to be able to have a say on our standing committees, um, especially since we're not allowing them to have a vote on the council since they're not elected members. Um, but one of our council members did make some great arguments about not wanting them to have a vote on like the accountability committee specifically and then possibly not on the budget committee. But I just wanted to open it up to the rest of the council and kind of get your guys' opinions on that before raising it to a vote for an amendment. Levi. So I was uh, for, uh, I'm of the mind that we should have all the committees that we have our de delegates work on to have a say in the committee, because not only are we supposed to be representing and advocating for the students uh, that we were leaders in charge of, but I feel like if we're gonna bring them into assist us with either uh, accountability or budget, those are very intensive or they're intensive committees. I feel they should at, least, at the very least be able to vote within the committee. So forgive me, I was out of the country last week. Um, so, but I did read the, read the, uh, the proposed amendments. Um, I don't necessarily mind the budget committee as much, but I mean, I just, having a seat on them as such, but because these two committees are set by the constitution, so they have set seats on each committee. Um, it's not really like re the rest, the uh, rest of our committees are open. I'm curious why they would like, it, it would be a constitutional amendment. I'm pretty sure that we did do. I'm more concerned about the accountability committee because that is our kind of internal accountability structure. I don't think necessarily like, I don't know, there's a lot of power in the accountability committee. I don't think necessarily that having voting delegates on it. I don't see why there's voting delegates even on that committee to be, begin with. Yeah. So That's just mine. Yeah, to respond to that, the only thing that I really see the need for um, delegates having a vote on that committee for is I do have the accountability committee working specifically on a constitutional revision. And I feel like it could be really helpful to have somebody who hasn't looked at it before. I mean, obviously we do have new council members this year that are also helping on that committee, but we also have two former council members that have kind of watched this constitution evolve but it could be helpful to have another outside perspective on that matter specifically so i think maybe a compromise could be between the two it could be like maybe allowing them to vote on like the constitutional amendment and that sort of thing but not having a vote on like the fate of a counselor or something along those lines um so there's kind of a gray area there and i think we could probably find a compromise and i could bring it back to the council next week um as a more thorough amendment, but Mike. Okay, um, I'm, actually then I kind of changed my perspective a little bit because they don't, the delegates don't vote on the council. Is that correct? correct? Okay, then I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily think, I think it's kind of up to the chair. I would put it up to the discretion of the chair then in that sense, because they're the one leading the committee, they're the one doing the work. I would definitely put up to them in a sense. Um, I don't think there needs to be a gray area necessarily, but I don't know. I think, I don't see it really affecting this council because I think, we're pretty much on the same page on those things. I could see it affecting the council that might be a little more divided in the future. I could see that becoming an issue. Uh, 
Well, just thinking about what you said with the accountability committee and the constitution piece, I agree. I would love to have other student voices in there. Um, Because even having somebody who doesn't have experience asking, because we need to write this to make sense to everybody. Um, But I'm curious on the voting rights, just for the fact of, if we give them voting rights on the committee, they can halfway vote what goes into the amendment, but then it comes to the council and they vote on it, and they can also do friendly amendments and change it anyways. I think that's part of why it's so good for them to have the vote on the standing committee is because then they can give the input and whatnot and make their voices heard. But then the elected counselors still have the final vote on it. So it's the same way as like in president's cabinet, like anybody can bring forth like a resolution to them and like from their different committees and stuff, but they pass it through everybody else and get it approved. But then it still goes to the president for the final vote. So it's kind of like the same function as a typical government, I would say. Yeah, I was just asking for clarification. It was really to Matt's point and just a point of information that, remember, as you all are building this out, you have the flexibility to shift it based on what you're seeing and what you're not seeing. But the idea is that you want to get these students involved in TSAC. And part of that is learning the voting process. And as Matt said, though, anything that's voted on in committee or most things that are voted on committee has to come here for full vote. So especially for a constitution. Um, So at that point, let's say Matt's in charge of the accountability committee, he's going to hear all of this. He's going to maybe allow them opportunities to vote in the committee. But then if you all decide, Hey, this isn't really going, that's up to Matt and their committee to really talk through a lot of that. So that's really where the learning experience is. Um, and then I just see this is a technical error, um, but it, so you passed a resolution last week, right? So to add voting rights and change the constitution, it needs to be an amendment. It needs to be a go go through the amendment process. That's not me trying to be difficult or anything. That's just for that. We had, that's something I can help with here moving forward. No, you're definitely fine. Um, would we still have to do that with this being a pilot temporary program for the next semester? But I think the plan oh, was be okay. just try this for next semester, see how it goes, and then we're going to make the program itself a constitutional amendment oh, if I see. we find that it's successful. So do you still think that it's necessary to change the voting powers if it's just a temporary pilot program? Because that's where we thought it was fine because it was. Yes, yeah, so um, it just so like budget because I because I wrote the thing. Um, it specifically says who has votes on the budget committee in, in the Constitution. It's it's framed in their sort of thing. So if you want them to have votes on the budget committee or even the accountability committee, it needs to be an amendment changed to like a temporary amendment that could expire this year and we can pass the full thing next year. It just needs to be that way. And because this is a pilot program and it's not going to happen to next semester, we have time to do this. But yeah. Or... Another option potential would be have a more like an advocacy committee this semester while we're proving the point and they'll have potentially like an informal, at least opinion to bring in. They may not have a full vote, but just to test the program and see where it needs to go just as a potential alternative. I'm fine with either. I don't mind like pass like it would take a take a week or so to do so, but I don't mind passing like a temporary thing that would expire. Like, hey, let's start this now. Like I would if I if I were us, I would start recruiting slash hiring now. Um now that this is passed. But I think we still need to build that framework a lot a little bit more, but I think you bring up great concern or great valid point with the votes. The votes that I do believe this may be, we do have to double check on this in the Constitution. The votes in reference are y'all's votes, not a committee vote. I understand the budget committee, different committees have a vote, but these individuals in the delegacy program are not voting on official business. They're voting internally to you know to understand, okay, this is how we are coming as the accountability council to vote. So this is not an official vote per se. Does that make sense? It's it's like I'm voting to approve that accountability is going to say yes on this. And then accountability's vote to say yes, that's the official vote. The vote prior to does not 
is not what's re- it's not being referenced. So kind of the same way that we've been doing with like since we have three PR chairs, like they all together have to come together with one vote, but just okay. making it so that if we have a delegate on that committee as well, they have Correct. to come together and have the same vote. Yes. Correct. I think there's a lot of like back and forth that you are thinking about. It's just we're just trying to help students have a voice within this delicacy program and their voices being included in the overall vote moving forward, not the sole representative vote. Does that make sense? Cool. I just want to Patrick? Yeah, just, um, same with Mike and I understand for Armando. Um, just making sure that clarifying all the things of what they're able to do, especially in the budget committee. Um, being that we have the chair and vice chair, and we have four standing committees on the on that one deciding on the budget. I'm just trying to see like where it stands inside of the Constitution and within our own guidelines that we have stated. So just you know, but like Mike said and how you guys were saying, we have time to build this and to clarify. So I think it's fine, but I think it is a great point just to um, start thinking about that and get that ball rolling down. Is there anybody present that would like to make an argument in favor of the removal of voting power on either of these committees? Uh, or what's your name again? Victor? <laughs> it's more of a question. So if I remember correctly, there's going to be one delegate to one chair, right? So there's never going to be more delegates than there's chairs. The way that we have it set up currently is we're going to elect the top six to eight delegates. Um, we made it a little bit smaller for this pilot program, just that way we can make sure, A, we had enough for them to do. Um, so they weren't just like not being able to meet their attendance requirements or not be able to actually contribute anything of substance um, because there was too many of them. Um, but then also just because it's a pilot program, so it's easier to manage and view a smaller group. Um, and then we can expand it in future years, but there's actually gonna be less. It's not like assign one person. It's gonna be like, have you seen the function on Teams where like you can assign tasks within a Teams group? Kind of like that where we'll just put up, hey, there's this meeting that at this time or we're working on this project for the Halloween order tree and we need help making the Jeopardy board or we're working on the constitutional amendments this day just so they can kind of pick and choose what they want to do and they can kind of explore all the different options that student government has to mm-hmm. offer instead of assigning them to one specific thing. Does that make sense? See, um, follow up. So let's say, let's say PR is voting for a banner color and there's obviously there's three chairs but then four delegates to get together to overpower that well would that like i know that's that's an internal thing not here but still i feel like that's a kind of it's also not a great example because everybody on the council is on the peer committee as well so we all, we all have a vote example example well like for sustainability per se because let's say there's four delegates and there's only two of us would their vote and whoever wants to be on the sustainability committee. So I echo the same argument. Where we can balance it out anyway, because any council member can choose to be on a standing committee, except for the one exception to that or the two exceptions to that are accountability and budget, which are the ones that we're debating about today because of that, because they have that aligned structure. So I can see those arguments being made for one of those, but not for sustainability or PR. Uh, Mike. Seems like your argument is like it's like a structural thing. We need to kind of fix a structural thing with it. Like, yeah, I don't, I, yeah, but I think it has to go to the council. The council can override anything that the com- like okay. whatever your committee does. I, we can override it as a as a fact as of that. And in my opinion, but I, I see what, I see what you mean. I think what, I think it's two things. I think it's up to kind of the chair how they want to structure the committee, and I also think it's up to how many delegates are assigned to that program, you know? So, like, say there's, like, three on PR, because PR is the biggest committee we have, the biggest budget. That would make sense. PR has, I think, what, five council members? I think it would just a good practice to hammer down who is on the PR committee, like, the five main members, and then the kind of associate members who kind of go in and, and do that. And then same with sustainability as well. So I would just reckon that y'all add a little more structure into that make a structure into your committees and uh, yeah yeah that's my thoughts oh it's 150. um i would also argue that if all the delegates are opposed to what you're saying then maybe there's a problem with what you're voting for <laughs> to 
Touche. So um, we're going to go ahead and table the rest of this conversation to give time to President Davidson since she is here um, and only for a short time, uh, but we will continue afterwards. So I'll turn the floor to you. Hey, Haley, you want to fill me in on what we were just talking about? Yeah, we're debating a little bit on the new delegates program. Um, looks like there's some issues with maybe not allowing delegates to have a vote on our accountability accountability committee or our budget committee. Um, so we're just debating on whether we want them to Can have a vote or a not. a brief overview of the delegates program? Yeah. Um, so it's a pilot program. So we're okay. still kind of working out the exact details. But the way that we're looking at it right now um, is we're going to elect six to eight delegates. We're going to serve as non-elected members on the council. Um, they'll be required to attend at least one formal meeting a month. But then outside of that, they will be required to do work on one of our four standing committees or a university-wide committee if there is the need for that. Um, so each of the chairs of the committees will be assigned with delegating tasks um, that the delegates may choose from. So they have the choice of exploring okay. the different options within the program and then attending any of the committee meetings. Um, I have it right now in the structure that we passed last week to let them have votes on all standing committees. Um, so that way they can have a say on, you know, like if we're working on something for sustainability voting in favor of it to bring to the full council or. But then the council has the final say. Correct. Yeah. And where do the delegates come from? We are sending out applications. We started sending them out yesterday and today, um, and I've got a flyer for them. So people are just going to apply for them. We're going to review the applications, and then we're putting together a subcommittee for an interview process to interview the delegates. And then we're so they're not elected by correct. the student body, correct? But they might have a vote. But it, it it's a vote to recommend, not a correct. Vote to yeah, a vote to recommend, not an official vote on the council. Um, if we had them voted on by the student body, that might be different, but. And the meetings that you have, how often do you all meet? A couple for times a month? Your council? The full council meets once a week, every once Friday. a week. And are those meetings open? Anybody can they are public or dial into? Yep. And we have public comment every day, every Friday meeting from 1135 to 1150. Okay. Cool. Lots of changes. I was, um, re we were relating how a couple years back when they redid the whole structure. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of these students weren't here then, right? And so, we're no. We were just started. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, yeah. and I was giving them the insight from, like, the board and the senior leaders where they were all like, he was here. And they were saying, oh, no, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And we were just like, let's see what the students do. I mean, it's college. They'll figure it out. And you did. Yeah. You did. But we were talking about the trade-offs, right? Because you don't have popularly elected leaders of the council, you elect them yourselves. So it's more of a parliamentary system. Yeah. What's the what's the Churchill quote about parliamentary? I don't know. It's the best form of government except for everything else. That's what he says about democracy. Democracy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. English and then English. he also says, or I think it's him, Churchill that says Americans always do the right thing after they've tried everything else. <laughs> yeah. So um uh, you want me to give some updates? Okay. So um, I just got off a call with all the other in presidents and chancellors across the state of Colorado with the governor and, and his staff to talk about the budget. They'll be announcing the, the governor's budget today at 1 p.m., so it's not public yet. He didn't give us a deep, deep, you know, whatever. It was just sort of like, hey, 10 minutes, here's what's coming. And basically what's coming is not a lot of money. I mean, they're going to be making something like $600 million cuts this year across the board. That's what they're anticipating. So this at this phase in the cycle, and I was explaining to, to Haley and Levi, the way it works is the first thing that happens in the legislative session is the governor, you know, delivers his budget. And then uh, the legislature says, hmm, interesting. Right. And then they launch into this big process of building a budget. And then it kind of goes back and forth. And then they opine, they come back with theirs. So his is basically a suggestion, much like your delegates, right? He's a suggestion. And um, now in a in some, depending on the politics, sometimes a governor has a lot of sway, right? And the legislators are very supportive of the governor. So whatever he says, they don't want to get on the wrong side. But that's not really the way this particular legislature is right now. And it, definitely in the last two years where, um, especially when it came to the higher education budget, the legislators were like, that is way too low. 
and we are going to completely do our own budget. And then they came back and then there's a little bit of back and forth until the governor either vetoes it or signs off. And so that's what you can expect next. So the game really begins now. And so to the extent that students want to get involved or anybody else, like that's what's coming up next. And in terms of, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes, a lot of people having coffee, a lot of people learning and trying to understand what's going on and push their issues and their agendas. Um, and, but then there's a couple formal things. And one of the formal things is uh, I, uh, every year in January, all the institutions of higher ed, we get an opportunity to testify to the, to the joint budget committee of the legislature. And that's where we um, really try to make our case of the impact that higher education and particularly our particular institution has on the state. And um, we just did an economic impact report. I think some of you all might have seen that. Um, it's an interesting, it's a good talking point, right? So one of the things is that for every dollar invested by the state of Colorado into MSU Denver, there's like an $11 return on that investment. So what does that mean? What do you mean an $11? It means we're educating people and those people are getting jobs. Those people are building businesses. Those people are paying salaries. Those people are paying taxes, higher taxes than they would otherwise have paid if they had had lower wages, right? So there's all those things that go into account. And even running this institution, I mean, we have to buy things. We have to buy chairs. We have to buy technology. And we try to do that local because we try to be a good anchor institution. Now, we can't always do that, but that's also putting, putting um, resources back into the economy so it becomes like a cycle. So it's important that people understand that because, you know, the taxpayers of Colorado are investing in this institution mostly because they want to invest in the students, right? But it becomes a um, flywheel, if you will, that helps the whole community. You have a more um, well-trained and educated workforce. You have a better civil society. People know how to participate in their government. So those are the kinds of arguments that we bring. The legislature loves to hear from students. So a lot of times we'll reach out to you all and we'll say, does anybody want to, and we'll find somebody to talk about a particular issue last year and the year before, big issues associated with healthcare. And so uh, we really understood that in the state of Colorado, there's a big health care crisis, meaning there aren't enough people. I mean, it's hard to get a doctor's appointment. It's We don't have good health care in the state. And it's, you know, a pending crisis. And so we said, as an anchor institution, we want to do our part. We want to help um, educate more health care providers across the spectrum, from nursing to behavioral health and mental health, social work, all the things, nutrition. And we have a health institute, but we don't have the good enough facilities and big enough facilities to put enough people through those programs. And so we really lobbied like crazy over the last few years. And we got the first tranche that helped us build out those simulation labs, which are state of the art best in Colorado. And we just opened those. And then we're, the next step is to build um, a health institute tower in, in that building will be right next to West classroom, you know, between West classroom and Boulder Creek, that side, there'll be a six, story building that has more classrooms, more labs, lots of office spaces, and um, really sort of lifting our game from an infrastructure perspective. Focus on interdisciplinary, interprofessional um, programs, about 10 different departments. Now, about 40% of our students, isn't that right? About 40% of our students major in something associated with healthcare. So it's a big deal. And we had not invested in that infrastructure in a very long time. So that's sort of the what and the why on that. The other thing that I think students should maybe care about, although it may not happen on your watch, is we're building student housing, which, um, you know, when, when you're alums and you're, you know, millionaires out in the system and you look back at your time here at MSU Denver, you will be able to say, I think, that you really influenced our decision to make this pivot into a more residential campus. We heard from students. We heard you know, in the 60s and 70s, when they built this university, when they built this campus, they built it in the downtown area because that's where most of the people lived that wanted affordable options for higher education. But it's expensive to live downtown. And so a lot of people, I don't have to tell you that, are living farther and farther out. So that commuter campus option becomes harder. And so we want to make a, a, another option for, for students. We have a lot of students living east out to Commerce City, we have a lot of students living north up by 
you know, upstate rain district and Thornton. And then even there are people down in Pueblo and Colorado Springs that would love to come here because we are such an amazing new university, but are kind of like, where am I going to live? What am I going to do? So you've probably heard the program is to build a 12 story tower in between the hotel and that big parking garage. There's a giant lot there that we are so used to seeing that we probably don't even notice it anymore, but it's ginormous used to be the um, baseball softball fields. So we call it the ball field project. And then next door to that building will be um, workforce housing. So a lot of our entry level uh, faculty and staff also have a hard time finding places to live here. So it'll be like more apartment style there for, for the faculty and staff and other people, you know, from around the community. A lot of students might actually qualify to live there. You have to have a certain level of income. Um, so I can imagine older, um, married, working students, adult students, if you will, transfer students that also might. So those two towers, I think, are going to really be game changers for MSU Denver going forward. So when you think about, and also that student tower will have our classroom to career hub in there, which I think will take that whole program, that whole career facing program, the whole, you know, vision that we have for every student to really have a good opportunity to engage with employers before they graduate to really figure out what the heck they want to do. And um, before they waste a lot of time and money on something else like majoring in engineering when you really want to be in biology or something. So those are the big areas of emphasis for us. And uh, this guy, the, the student affairs vice president is task force chair, co-chair on that ball field project. So that's a big deal. No pressure. No pressure. I'm right there with you though. Don't you worry. So those are some of the big things that are top of mind budget infrastructure, really building out the physical parts of this campus so that we have um, state of the art facilities. So opportunities also for students and especially student government to engage as the as those things happen, um, as as these guys really think through what that student housing is going to look like. And you've already done a lot of that work outreach to the students. AHEC, meanwhile, are thinking about some really big projects. They want to reimagine the Tivoli. It's an iconic historic building right in the middle of, middle of downtown. It's beautiful on the outside. It's kind of wonky and weird on the inside. It's kind of like an ugly Christmas tree that everybody threw their own little thing on. And so they really want to really think that through. And um, so that could be a really, really cool area for students to engage. What do you want out of a tri-institutional um, student union building? What do you want in there? What do you want to feel like? What kind of things do you want? Um, so they're really thinking that through. They're also working on early childhood uh, learning center, which will also go in that ball field project. So that will affect some students also who have kids that you know need some daycare. And they're also working on um, uh, a safety building, right? So they'll have like the criminal justice department in there, more classrooms and meeting spaces. And that's also where the Auraria police would like relocate in that area because if you've ever been, hopefully nobody in this room has ever had to spend time in the little Auraria holding jail, but it is no bueno. And so that, that whole facility needs, needs an upgrade too. So lots of opportunity to, to participate in that. So those are some of the things that are top of mind and I'm happy to take any questions or anything else you think that I should be telling you about. Perfect, I'll open it up to y'all for questions. I saw Vic with his hand up first and then Mike. Thank you for being here. Sure. Um, so we have the Tivoli reimagined, a health building, ballpark, safety building. Is that going to interfere with scheduling, with classes? Where are we going to put the health center students? Like, are we going to have to stop school for yeah. some summer <laughs> semester? Question. That's a great question. So the short answer is no, because these are all sort of ads. So the um that did happen when we built the sim labs because we built the simulation labs in on the second floor of a wing of west classroom so it was a big domino project that had to happen people had to move out temporarily move back in da da da, da. this will be um people may move but i don't think there will be like closers so it will break ground on the Health Institute Tower. It's next door. It's a brand new building next door to the West Classroom. It will be connected to the West Classroom too, which is kind of cool somehow, some way. They're still doing the design. And then programs will move into there. Some 
programs will move their offices into there. But otherwise, there'll be just more and better classroom spaces as well and meeting spaces. And hopefully, oh, didn't even mention food options. There's a huge movement afoot to have a campus-wide, really lift our game um, improvement on food. I, I, I think of this campus as a bit of a food desert. I mean, there's not, we need better options. And so I think there's, you're, this guy's running that one too. <laughs> so bringing in student voices, and I think we've done a lot of that already, surveying of like what kinds of food. Um, and so in that student tower, we're, in fact, this afternoon, we're going on a, we, some of the leaders and the architects are going on a community tour to look at some of these um, other ways that people have done, like food halls, you know, like the Dairy Block and other places to see, get cool ideas for what we can do on this campus, not only on the first floor of the student, of the student housing, but also when we redo the Tivoli. So if you think about the whole campus, like what are our options for food? And um, we're envisioning, you know, you have one swipe card that you can like use at Starbucks or like the dining hall or whatever. So there's a lot of like TBD. It's kind of crazy because there's just an infinite amount of choices. And at some point we have to be like, okay, here's what we're going to do. So real opportunities for that, right? Yeah, if I can just add one thing. So you asked about classroom disruptions, but I've also been thoughtful about just campus disruptions. Yeah. And when really. you look at the map of all the construction, there is a pretty clear line down 9th Street. Mm -hmm. um, the good news is uh, AHEC is engaging a parking and traffic study that should have launched this month, right? I think they've launched it. October. Yeah. Yeah. But particularly Matthew and, and Victor for SACAB, I think hopefully they're they're coming to you with input about that it took me 20 minutes just to turn off Auraria parkway and get into the seventh street garage the other day coming in in the morning so i i think just our own traffic just our own traffic and so once we start sure. disrupting some of the roadways with cranes and construction i do worry about that but hopefully we will have the results of that study in plenty of time to yeah. to think about what it means during the construction and speaking phase. of transportation you know the rtd situation that's right. It's an issue, not just for this campus, but for the whole front range. And um, the Auraria Campus Board of Directors, so you know, wait, who's, you're on that, right? Who's on that? You're on that. One of you guys is on that, the SACAB. They're both on SACAB. Oh, you're both on that. Yeah. And, they're the, and then you wrote, that's right, and then you rotate who gets the, in the, who, who goes to the board, the Auraria board. Is that not SACAB? There's a SACAB rep. That's right. That was interim for the first yeah. meeting, and then they voted somebody else to sit in. Yeah. It. So now there's another representative. Yeah, and I think the current rep is from CU Denver. I'm not sure. It rotates. Point is um, that at the last ABOD, Auraria Board of Directors meeting, the board uh, agreed to send a letter of support for the ballot initiative that is going to help keep RTD funded. Um, and another area where, you know, students can engage and have their voices elevated is how important public transportation is across the front range. But especially for this campus, there's 50,000 people on this campus, faculty, staff, and students. We have the three busiest RTD stations in the state and, um, you know, finding ways to make that affordable for students in what is still a predominantly commuter campus is super important. So, you know, again, your voices. Your voices are, it's funny because you may feel like, oh, no one, people listen to the students more than they listen to me. I could say it all day long and they have students come up and tell their stories and people are like, oh, you guys have a lot more power than you think you have <laughs> in addition to responsibility. What Mike, else? Did you still have your question? How much time? Five minutes right now? Yeah. One more question. Yeah. Until 12 10, but if you have time. Yeah. How much time do I have, Joey? Okay. I don't have a watch. Okay. All right. Um, brief question. You mentioned budget cuts. I know we kind of averted a budget nightmare here uh, with the states, but uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned some budget cuts. Realistically, where do you see those affecting us, affecting our school? What I feel, and we'll know more at one o'clock today mm -hmm. about what the governor's budget is. 
whatever the governor's budget is, it will be the low mark because I have faith in the legislature to make that better. Okay. But what I suspect is that we may get a budget at the end of the thing, which we won't know till like, like April, that is maybe flat. But flat is kind of a cut because of inflation. Yeah. So our costs go up, costs us, you know, energy, you know, to, to basically do the thing. Um, and we're really, really trying to protect compensation for our faculty and staff because 70% of our budget is people because our mission is to serve and educate students and it's people that do that. Right. So when you say, Oh, you're just throwing all the money at compensation. Yeah. We have to have competitive wages for our faculty and staff or they are there, or we don't have, we got nothing. And so we will try to protect that. We will try to protect all anything student facing. Um, We will also MSU Denver is on a, a big, a big initiative for this particular year to find more efficiencies. So those are the kinds of things we're really going to be squeezing this year. So fluffy new ideas, this may not be the year, but doubling down on the things that we know work and and my measure of what works, the number one measure is whether it's keeping students in class on course to graduation. So we look at data like retention rates, which is like how many of you all are stopping out or dropping out because it's just too complicated, too messed up with your lives, or we, we need to make it easier for you to like stay in school and graduate and to do it affordably. Right. So, I mean, I guess that short answer to your question is we're going to try like crazy to protect everything that matters and we're going to lobby like crazy. Now I'll tell you what, because our graduation and retention rates have gone up a little bit, we actually might not hurt as bad as in the past because the funding formula from the state Mm -hmm. gives us credit if we're doing better by our students. Mm. which is great. Right. So, um, I'm, I'm still cautiously, I wouldn't say optimistic, but I'm not so pessimistic as some people are. I've seen years before where it's like the sky is falling and then they find some money and those kinds of things. Casey's really good at her job. Casey is great. Casey's great. And you know, even, even more powerful when you guys are helping her out. And kudos to Patrick and to Amelia for joining the student success launch. And so please do make sure that your ideas about how we can continue to increase those graduation and retention rates. Yeah. Like you've, you've done, you have great representatives in that room, but. Yeah. So I, I tell my, I tell the faculty and staff that, that the way it works is it's like a flywheel, right? Which is sort of a quasi, it's a physics thing, but it's really a metaphor. So if we are investing in the things that help you succeed, right, it will show up that succeed this that success will show up in our retention and our graduation rates. Now, if we show that we're improving our retention and our graduation rates, the state gives us more money. So guess what? Then we put that money back in to all the things that help you guys succeed. And then it has more. So it, it, it's like self-reinforcing. So that's why we focus so much. Well, it's because it's our mission, but the better we do it, the better we do, the better we do is basically how it works. Right. So. And don't forget, like, it is really the faculty and the, and the staff that, that spin that thing, make it work. Joy, what do I have next? Okay, I gotta go. Oh, you gotta, you gotta go. go too. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go look at food options. All right. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so guys. For your time. Thank, thank you for your service. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, back to the delegates program. Uh, I know Matt and Patrick had one more comment to Victor's point. Do you guys remember what you were going to say? Do you remember? I recall pointing out to like Victor's case. Um, so since this is isn't it, so they're going to be voting, but I just want to clarify, right? So they're going to be voting. I'm talking like specifically like towards like the budget committee, not necessarily the PR committee, because the PR committee, like opinions are always welcome because that's where our ideas and our events are like made from there, and it's been contributed by people from this council, like 
and Levi here who had the idea about the um, sips and cider, which was changed formally to grab and go. And, uh, and recently, your idea of joining the orgs and tree and Susana's ability to uh, coordinate that, make that to a big deal for us and the help that Matt done. Like PR committee is required to have like a lot of ideas, a lot of minds into it. Whereas budget committee, I don't really see as far as aside of just our standing committees and the co-chair and the chair and the vice chair to have more voting power in that. Because if we overrule them, then what's the point of them voting? Is yours directly related to his or do you want me to respond to his first? So the argument that I've heard is that our budget comes from student fees. So the students should have a say on that and where we're putting that money towards. I know that it's strictly set to be like the chairs and like the vice chair for budget. So it would have to be a constitutional amendment. And Mike may be able to speak more to this because he's run budget in the past. But I mean, most of what the budget committee votes on has to do with like where we allocate our funds. Yes, but we set the budget at the beginning of the year, but we can change it, which we are going to have to do anyways for the delegates program, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and then like voting to like fund like different student travel stuff. And I don't know if I see any big issues with having additional student voice on that where they would really not vote in favor, but I'm happy to hear alternative opinions. And I see Will is typing, but. So, you know, this sounds like an SGA, if you guys know what that is. This sounds more and more like an SGA the more I think about it. Not why idea, but anyway, I put that aside. Um, I'm more. I think this pot of delegates, whoever we choose to take on, I get like m the way I would see them voting on is they would vote how every other chair votes. They'd be kind of their own committee, and they would come together to represent one vote on that budget committee. That I think that's the I think that's the end of compromise we're working towards, and we'll get to. Um, but I do want to put aside this. We're also students, and we're also voted in by the students. So don't don't that that argument of we come from student fees. We also pay the student fees too. So I, that's an argument that's been used in the past to kind of not not do anything. No. <laughs> well, like I'm not necessarily saying I'm opposed to it. What I am saying is that we should definitely like reiterating the fact that Victor is pointing out, and you know we should um, strongly consider like the the outcomes from this. Um, and this is a pilot program, and understand, but that's the whole point. We're we're is that we're having discussions to think about the ideas and possibilities of it. So that's just my input on it. Um, but yeah, you know, definitely an amendment or anything like that. We should all come together for that. Um, I was gonna piggyback, piggyback off of Mike. Um, have like the delegates all have one vote. And then the vote goes to whatever is being voted on for the specific committee. I think that would be the best thing. Yeah, so, yeah, so this is kind of related to what I was going to do in the updates, but with um, I was going to do a meeting for Monday for the budget committee because for the determining the allocations of the budget for that. But if we if we could just stand, this kind of goes up with it because we make it an advisory committee. Then you know it would be a lot more functional that that way they have their own, you know, it's like their own separate thing, but they're also part of us. Yeah, I think I really like the idea of that. That way they still have the voice, but then maybe it's a little bit more narrowed. I don't know if Will has an opinion on that. Um, but I think that's a great compromise. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Matt because he's had a comment for a minute. So I just kind of want to point out, I actually don't think the issue that Victor pointed out is actually going to happen. Because one, we're not going to put more students on a committee that doesn't have work to be done. Like, we're not going to have five student representatives with accountability. We're not going to have five on sustainability unless, like, we're building out enough programming for it. Um, especially with this year in the pilot program, since we've limited to six, but I do think it is something to definitely think in the big picture, 
especially when we get closer to making more as a resolution or a amendment. I was I was under the interpretation that we weren't going to designate to specific committee. It was more just like they were floating. So that's why I was like, if they all come together on one resolution, and then they all get to vote on that resolution, that's that seems, you know. But if this compromise, I honestly. See what's wrong with that. Can I make a direct comment? Because they could see them still being floating and they can pick their projects. But if but if the project that's submitted only needs one person to help with it, you're not gonna send four people there. It wasn't more of like a I'm against it, but it was more like just something to point out. I was just thinking about it. I think we're all trying to get clarification in this conversation. Because this is a pilot pro program, <clears throat> I think I think we err on the side of let's just try and see what works. If you don't like a pair of shoes, then go buy it. We can work it and into kind of what we want. Um, I think the concerns are valid. I think it's just good planning. Um, Quick question, who's like, I'm assuming the advisors are, but who, is there like a counselor overseeing this? I, I, I missed that part. Is there like a, who's kind of overseeing the, the, the delegates? Um, so I have in the resolution that the delegates will each be assigned to an advisor who they will like report to for like accountability purposes, but then all of the council is responsible for helping them out just since they're floaters and not assigned to a specific committee. So it's going to be kind of like, if you have a delegate pick up a specific task for your committee, then you're in charge of helping like them to get that project done and provide them the support that they need, but then also like hold them accountable if they're not able to get it done. Okay. But the advisors are also going to be helping. So it's like a little bit of both. Levi, or did you still have something? So for the sake of time, uh, should we vote on this issue? Because uh, we still have a lot to cover. Patrick has another comment. Uh, yeah, no, I think Mike was kind of kind of took what I was going to say, too. And, you know, I think these are things that we should consider. I'm not necessarily opposed to this at all, because I do like the idea that we have more of a um, established help for TSEC and in general, just people that are going to be stepping up to the plate, hopefully, to join TSEC. Um, but yeah, I think and to what Levi is saying, I think we should wait till all council members are here to vote on it. I would also argue that there's not really anything to vote on at this point. If we're not going to change it, it just stays how it is. And then I can work with Mike on possibly making an adjustment for the budget committee specifically so that they have their own program, um, unless there's anybody in opposition of those points. Um, and I'm happy to have further conversations of, about it outside of council, but it sounds like for the most part, everybody's in favor of keeping the voting power, maybe just restructuring how we do it for budget. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and, Susanna. Um, so, I just thought about this. So, if they're just floating around and just like what Victor said, do they have a vote depending on the committee of the task they choose? But like if they leave that, that the vote is not counted and they choose a different one. Does, I don't know if I'm clarifying that. Because then, like, how are we going to hold them accountable if they, oh, I'll finish this project, but I don't really like this one, so I'm going to go on the next one. But the vote is not counted on this committee, but on the next committee. Right, so I think, you want to, I was just going to say that um, I think it's just if they're in attendance at those meetings and they're working on, like, the projects and stuff, then they can have that vote. But if they're, like, I worked on this one project for sustainability, but now there's a project for PR that I want to work on. So I'm going to move over to PR for this next one. Then they won't be at those meetings or working on those projects. So they won't have a vote. Okay. So it won't like count against quorum, if that's your concern. Okay. I was just trying to understand it a little bit better. Thank yeah. you. And we'll have to kind of like finic with it and work yeah, with it. Yeah, just to go. mess it around. Yeah. Thanks, Armando. For the sake of time, and I think to wrap this up, I, since the vote is such a contentious point with you all, <laughs> I think maybe what we can do is just write it in there as um, it is on the responsibility of the council, the advisors, and the delegates to make sure that all voices are heard in a fair and democratic way, as similar as 
as much similar to what TSAC represents. That way it removes the vote in that formal nature, but the responsibility is written down to say that that committee and or council member is responsible to gathering that voice. And then we can all save ourselves the grace. I like that, especially because committees don't really vote on anything. We kind of just all work together and come up with something. So as long as we're making sure that all the voices are heard, I think that's what's the most important. Um, one last statement. Yeah, go for it. I also want to thank Kaylee for taking this project by the horns and making it happen with us. Um, I go ahead and motion that we adopt the language that Armando used into this resolution. Can it? Any objections? Any abstentions? Oops, am I saying that wrong? <laughs> All right, it goes ahead and passes. I will add that in the into the text. Um, and then we'll just have to work out on the exact details of that. Mike, I will connect with you and Patrick on how that will work for budget specifically. Um, there are two other things with the delegates program. I'll try and make these ones quicker since they shouldn't be as contentious. Um, I just wanted to change the number of members for the interview subcommittee to three members rather than two. My justification for doing this was I realized that us as council members are likely going to be recommending people to apply for this program that we know personally. And if we're interviewing people that we know personally, there may be some sort of bias and we want the ability to like recuse ourselves from those interviews and from moving those people forward to the council. And I think having three rather than, than two seems a little bit more fair for being able to do that. Um, I don't know if anybody has any arguments for or against that besides myself. Okay. I'm for it because it also, I think it should, might even be better to always have three. So even if we have like a fourth one to rotate, if somebody has to opt out, but having three just so there's also uh, no issues with any sort of like ties. We could always just have it, so I could set it as three the way that I'm proposing it now and then have whatever advisor is in on the interview be the tiebreaker if there is. I think that sounds fair. Anybody opposed to that? Okay, so then I motion to Victor. Is it going to be the three same people doing every single interview or are we going to mix it up between the councils? I have it set as we elect three people, but I'm happy to do it where we can rotate. Instead. I can be as well. I think three people do it would be fun. Steven. Direct comment to what you all are saying. If you have three folks on the committee, there is no need for a tiebreaker. Yeah. If in the case of somebody having to recuse themselves and they're just being two was my point. I don't think advisors should have that. I think I think if there is a tie. You all. Should bring it to the council. OK. So then do we want to have it where it's on a rotating basis or set with just the three, like keep it the same structure as I had it, but just add an additional person? Set with three. Okay. Um, so then I motion we keep the same structure that we have as for the interview subcommittee, but we increase the number of members on that committee to three members rather than two. Second. Any objections? Any abstentions? All right, that passes as well. And then I'm going to pass it over to Patrick real quick for kind of what we're going to do for the budget side of things. Um, I had a different idea for this originally, but then after speaking with Patrick, it sounds like it's going to be a different budget subcommittee process. So just have that on your calendars. Thank you, Haley. So yeah, so setting for I'm getting with Brandon to help me out make a meeting for tomorrow um, for Monday. Sorry for Monday. Um, so according to our last meeting, we decided that we're going to use a rainy day fund for the um, delegates budget. However, reading the guidelines. Uh, we we can't exactly do that because it's not essentially an emergency. However, one thing that they did find that we could do is putting it as an advisory committee. That way we could subside it as towards our budget and we could sell. But we would have to, um, what's it called, a reconciliation, right? Reconciliation of the whole budget to modify for that. So we're going to be adding a whole nother 
essentially an advisory committee, and that's going to be something we're going to be discussing on Monday. I just wanted to keep everyone know about that because rainy days for our rainy days. Go for it. Yeah, so basically we're going to rebalance the budget and make an extra fund for this program specifically. What that means is every receipt that we paid for so far needs to be set in by tonight so we can balance the budget see we have currently um because there's what most likely happen is to make this fund either there'll be some cuts to some funds or some shifting right of some money so rainy day funds what nine thousand right now or something seven seven we shift two thousand from there and another thousand somewhere else and we'd probably be there but that's what the budget committee is for monday but just make sure all your receipts are in from events so this is basically pr but yeah or estimation of events so sustainability Another thing also, I just wanted to um, shout out to for um, Haley and Vic for this one. So do you guys um, for say if we're going to be um, reevaluating everything, maybe the sustainability committee, because I know you guys are matching and stuff and you guys are planning a lot more events. Maybe we could reconsider something like that. But just like Mike said, bringing up receipts, um, estimating budgets for future events will be definitely helpful for this meeting so we can come prepared and have this get this done. Alrighty, uh, so we will have that budget meeting on Monday, so just keep that on your guys' radars. We'll get the calendar invite out for that. Um, next up, I've got the resolution for co-sponsoring a post-elections event. I'll add you on there, don't worry. Are you? Do you want to pull it up and add you guys on there while I read it? Okay, perfect. Um, so abstract student government, the Student Advocacy Council, SGTSEC, continues, it, continues its mission of advocating for students and their evolving needs. The presidential election season can be a stressful time for students, and the stress may be extended in the days after the election. Auraria Votes has a, created a tri-institutional event to help provide relief from the stress of elections and has requested MSU Denver's SGTSEC be involved in some manner. Therefore, to provide a de-stressing activity for students, SGTSEC will hire two masseuses as a contribution to this event. Whereas the presidential election can be a stressful time for students on both sides of the aisle, and there are great tensions surrounding politics in general due to the polarized nature of our country, the results of the election may further these tensions with either possible outcome. Whereas MSU Denver students are already being provided a dedicated space to de-stress from these tensions in an event by, hosted by Auraria Votes, um, this space will be dedicated towards low-stress activities and bringing together community without political involvement. Whereas SGTSAC can and should contribute to this event to help provide an outlet for students to de-stress during this turbulent time, this aligns greatly with SGTSAC's goal and mission. So therefore, be it resolved, SGTSAC will use their public relations budget to fund two masseuses that will provide free massages to students who attend this tri-institutional de-stress event. The cost of these masseuses will be approximately $800 plus taxes and fees. Any questions, comments, concerns? I know I brought this up at the last meeting also, but... How many hours are these masseuses doing? It will be four hours from 10 to 2, but they'll be permitted to take a couple of 5 to 10 minute breaks. But there'll be 5 to 10 minute massages as well. And yes. there's two of them. And is this the same place that we worked with Food for Finals? Uh, yeah, the same one that you guys have used in previous right. years. Mike? Location this? Is it going to be in our office? This one is, uh, it's a tri-institutional event. It's going to be in Tivoli 320. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? Um, November 6th, because it's going to be the Wednesday, the day right after the election. OK, with no further further questions or concerns, I motion that we pass this resolution. Seconded. Any objections? Any, uh, <laughs> <laughs> any abstentions? All right, and then the resolution passes. And with that, we will move over to board and committee updates. Mike. Um, I don't have many um, updates from the board of trustees. Um, I think their next meeting is around January, I believe. So um, yeah, we don't have any updates currently from them. Vic and Matt, for up. Uh, let's see. So in terms of timeline for this vote on the board, it seems like it's going to come into close. So we're extending it 
to go like a we were thinking about doing a year campaign thing so that's going to take a little bit of time um so more information on that later um let's see what else oh tivoli reimagined i went on friday there's some really cool plans for the tivoli we're still looking for student uh, input and voices and stuff like that. So if you have anybody or anything that you guys would like to see in the plan, please let me know. Um, and I'll take it up to the, uh, to the committee. And we're having, should this be sustainability or? Eh, we're having a meeting with a couple of students about the RTD initiative on Monday morning to see what CU Denver is doing in terms of that. And we're going to bring something to the table as well. We'll see you. Uh, what we can do with that on Monday as well. So, uh, other than that, Matt? Yeah, and um, Auraria Sustainability came to do their presentation for AHA Week today. SACAB did support them. Um, we did throw out a couple of questions to them, though. Um, for one, they referenced they have SNAP coordinators. Um, we kind of challenged them to also maybe get some Medicaid uh, people to sign people, students up since that are already exist on campus within the health center. And I'm really close to getting the data for the SNAP and everything. So um, we'll try and get that going. And I don't know a timeline because we haven't met with the vendor yet, but I'm hoping by the end of this school year at least. Do we have any updates from accountability? I'm not sure if Will can speak right now, but I'm one of you two if you guys have anything. So I guess just reiterating of what we were talking about earlier, not too long ago, about the budget change. As far as that, um, I haven't received any receipts from anybody. So, you know, there's really not many changes from last week. And I don't want to speak for the committee as a whole, um, but I do like some of the ideas that were brought up in the previous discussion of, um, I know we're doing our edits of the Constitution, but I think uh, beginning of next semester, I think one of our delegates should join that to throw their input in. Because again, even if it's not major changes, we want to make sure that even someone who has never had experience writing documents like this, we want to make sure they understand it as reading it. So if they even come with questions, on that level, I think it'd be really helpful for us. And then no updates for budget then. Um, we'll move over to PR. Um, happy November, guys. We finally finished October. That was one of the busiest months we ever had. <laughs> but um, just wanted to say thanks for all the help. Yesterday was, I think it was a great hit. We did communicate with a lot of students. A lot of students did get to know more about the delicate program. Um, the de los dios de los muertos, thank you for everyone that sent me the pictures. It's going to be hanged up by today. I had a midterm last night, so I couldn't do it. But, and I think that's all of the information we have in total. We just start to... We have to start planning for food for finals, but that's all the updates I have. Uh, do you have something on? Yeah, just thank you for everybody. And also, um, you know, kudos to Susanna with coming up with that Jeopardy idea. And thank you for everyone who came to our PR committees to help us create that event. And of course, Haley for suggesting orgs and treat. I just want to thank the current PR team to make the work that I did solo last year look like garbage. <laughs> I know that like I was there and I was filling that spot. I feel like I did as good a job as I could, but they are blowing what I could do within my capacities out of the water. Um, Victor, do you want to take the lead on sustainability updates? We're still running AHA. Uh -huh. Um, we'll get that budget, kind of what we might be able to spend, because we haven't spent anything yet. So we're, I will give you that estimation by today. Um, please donate. Please spread out, spread the word. Thank you guys, everybody who shared that on your guys' 
social media is so really nice. Um, yeah. Do you have anything? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the clothing drive has become more tri institutional now. It sounds like CU Denver is going to put some boxes up in their areas, and CCD already has, which is great because the more the merrier. Um, and then Victor and I just need to finalize what we're doing for our tabling besides giving out free school supplies or if we're just going to stick to that and we'll hopefully have a resolution for y'all next week. Um, but I think that's pretty much it coming out of sustainability for now, uh, besides the RTD meeting, which you covered for SAGAP. Um, I'm going to turn it over to open floor announcements. Levi. So I had some just real quick for the, um, uh, department of higher education for Colorado. Um, because uh, I attended the meeting, uh, um, I think it was Monday, yeah, or Tuesday. It's been a long week. Anyways, um, pretty much briefly what you just said, uh, what President uh, Davidson said earlier, um, they are planning on doing budget cuts for uh, higher education, and today they're having the meeting of how deep and how hard they'll cut us, and that's what she was talking about earlier when it comes to the governor telling uh, all the uh, leaders of the universities about uh, where they cut and what they're in cut and how deep the cut's going to be. So that's what I just wanted to share. We're not going to find out for sure what that entails until probably next week. And that's all I had. Anybody else for open floor? Uh, Amelia? Yeah, I have a update about the survey that has been discussed in terms of investigating the partnership with Lockheed Martin. Um, and I just wanted to streamline communication that Levi and I have met with the advisors and we are working on, fi we're working on finalizing the proposal for the um, survey that will be announced soon. Okay, anybody else? I have a quick few just a reminder that the elections watch party is gonna be next Tuesday. I'm um, going to be in the Tivoli Brewery. If you guys are able to come, I would highly encourage you to be there. Um, sounds like there's going to be some media presence, so they might be looking for a few students to do interviews. Um, and then also for the days after the election, there's going to be two de-stress events, the one that we're participating in on November 6th, and then there's also one the next day on November 7th. There's one for faculty and staff on the 6th, but you guys can still come get massages at the student one. Um, Nothing crazy coming out of President's Cabinet. Dr. Davidson pretty much covered it all while she was here. And then I will also be reaching out to y'all about setting up some discussions about how to do the informational session for the delegates program. And I think that's all the announcements that I had. Do we have anything from faculty staff? Yes, I do. Do you have something? All right. Um, Oh, got it. <laughs> um, so other than kind of normal business that they were doing and doing some edits to the catalog and stuff, um, one big thing that they were discussing this week, um, they didn't vote on it, but they were doing a like a temperature check of this issue. Um, so it looks like there might be a broader than MSU kind of initiative out there to, sorry, I'm also trying to summarize it too with, as I'm reading it. Um, they're talking about making a 90 degree bachelor's program. Um, and it looks like some other schools across the state have created a letter that I will send to uh, everybody here in a few uh, about their positions on it and how they want to be included. Um, cause there's a lot of contentions around calling it a bachelor's degree versus something else. If we want to make it, what programs can do it if we're setting up students for proper success. Um, so I'll send it out to read just to keep on your radar cause it seems like an interesting thing in the broader Colorado sphere of higher education. Actually, I'll put it in the chat right now. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, um, advisor updates. My only update, folks, is that next week's, well, I guess today starts Native 
Indigenous Heritage Month. We have kickoff, Native Indigenous Heritage Month kickoff, starting next um, next Monday, 11 to 1, in the Turner Hall. And then there'll be events throughout the course of the month. Keep up the good work, TSAC. Yes, I have a couple things. First, I'm going to be asking. So um, I've been working with a couple of you all on editing the website. Um, and one of the things I need from you all is now we are heading into the close of the fall semester. So by November 15th, so that gives you all two weeks. Um, I would like each committee to send me a report, more of an annual report, semester report style of um, tasks you've done, initiatives that are being brought up, and just projects that are ongoing. Um, I pulled up this screen here because what I'm trying to do is add an initiative tracker of sorts onto our website. Um, so here's an example of one that Regis does where they kind of just give an overview um, of the initiatives and really what's going on. Here's another one that I've seen, which is a little bit more detailed, um, where it says, you know, status and a quick little blurb and multiple things to do. You know what I mean? So that is something I'm trying to update so we can, you know, keep that transparency outreach and just for the students and the, you know, public bodies to know what's going on. So by November 15th, all committees, um, and if you have any other projects, you can just side note that and just include it in there, please. Um, and then doo -doo -doo, second thing was, yes, good job to the PR team for the event this week. I'm happy to see that it came together. I was going to say if we can get together either today, I don't we can find some time, but we need to get together to start doing food for finals. I will be out for the next two weeks. Um, I have school next week and then PTO the following. Um, so I really want to get the food for finals things at least ordered and prepped. So we're not running in the last second. That is all for me. Dr. Brown, if you have anything. Hi. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for all of your great work, your great outreach, your engagement. It's really showing in the community and I'm hearing a lot from uh, staff and faculty even in a lot of the places and the meetings that I'm in. Um, so just wanted to give you a big kudos. Your, um, your leadership is really being noticed across campus. Um, I also wanna, uh, I guess just remind you all that we don't have much time left in this uh, semester, um, including fall break and then thinking about finals week. Um, you all are scheduled to meet through the rest of the semester, but because of those things, it's really maybe four or five weeks of four or five meetings before the semester is over. I think you've made great progress, and I'm really glad that Armando's asking for you all to um, document that progress, including your tasks, your initiatives, and kind of where you're at with all of those to be really transparent, because I think you have a lot of really important work to highlight and show. So just really proud of you all. And um, yeah, just looking forward to to seeing what you will continue to accomplish. And the other thing I really want to compliment you all on is your ability to engage in really um, meaningful conversations and offering your perspectives. Um, and not only are they meaningful, but they are respectful. Even when you all don't agree, you find ways to listen and to hear one another and to work through um, disagreements in really, really productive ways, um, probably more productive than I've seen in a really long time or I see in other spaces. So just really proud of you all for the work that you're doing and how you're engaging with each other too, um, especially when we see all the other things that are happening in the world right now. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being awesome. That's it. I just have one final thing I do want to remind as Dr. Brown brought up. Um, just so you all know, in the Constitution, past councils have voted that there will be no meetings if class is not in session. So just so you all know, uh, November 29th, which is Thanksgiving break, obviously we're not meeting. Um, December 13th, that is graduation. There was some contention. Sometimes we had a meeting, sometimes we did not. I know a couple of y'all are required to be there. I know Michael needs to sit on stage and represent you all as student trustee and some other folks. So that is a meeting that typically we do not have. And then the 20th and 27th of December. So essentially your last meeting would be that December 6th date, unless you have any other internal you know, offset committee meetings, just so you all know that. 
So just a reminder, December 6th will be the final for the semester. Moving forward. Perfect. Does anybody else have any other last minute updates? And I'm going to go ahead and motion to end the meeting. Seconded. Any objections? <laughs> <laughs> any abstentions? Okay, bye, all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs>